one of the predominant reasons why we hear that people don't want to start exercising or don't exercise consistently is they really don't like the way their body feels after they finish working out. Mm -hmm. Whether they're feeling achy, beat up, sore, like they're like, yeah, you know what? I would work out, but I don't want to feel all stiff and achy for, you know, three days after. Well, that's an indication that at some level, your body was not able to tolerate your working out. But muscle activation techniques will allow your body to tolerate your workout better. Welcome to the Exercise is Health podcast, where we're talking about exercise, health, and the interconnectedness of the two. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we will be coming to you every single week from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Exercise is Health podcast. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we're coming to you from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg in Schaumburg, Illinois. Now, at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, we believe your health is your most valuable asset. Your health is one of the biggest influencers of the quality and quantity of time that you have. And while there are many aspects of health, our expertise is exercise. Exercise has been proven time and again to not only improve your health, but also increase your longevity and improve your quality of life. And today we are talking about what we may even consider to be like a precursor step to what most people think of as when they think of exercise. And that is one of our specialties here at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, and that is muscle activation techniques. What we want to talk with you about today is why muscle activation techniques, or MAT, is a great starting place, and in fact, in our opinion, is the starting place for everybody across the board when they're going to start exercising, specifically if they're trying to, what we call, exercise for life. This is a, uh, I'm excited about this topic because I don't know of any current clients, and Charlie, you can tell me if you have a different experience, that come in and say, I'm here for MAT because I'm going to, I want to start exercising and I want to do so safely, effectively. But what we do see, which is why we thought of this topic, we're like, hey, we got to talk about this, because we have a handful of clients that come in because something is restricting them in their muscle system. They come in for MAT to get that addressed. And then they realize like, wow, I actually finally feel good enough, strong enough, stable enough, mm-hmm. resilient enough in my body that I could start exercising. Exactly. And so we kind of see it in the reverse way. And I feel like if this message could get out, then more people that look at themselves or are kind of like when they like internally feel how their body's feeling, could start feeling like they could exercise because I think a lot of people have zero interest in exercise and a lot of people have a lot of interest in exercise, but they feel like their body disqualifies them from exercising because of maybe an experience they have, they have had with exercise or the way that they kind of walk around with their body feeling. They feel like, well, you know, my body's getting old or I've got this thing going on. I got this, you know, joint thing going on, this muscle tightness thing or whatever they're feeling in their body Mm -hmm. and in their brain, they kind of disqualify themselves from exercise. So I hope hope that maybe one day we could reverse the story where it's like, hey, I'd like to get to I'd like to get exercising. This thing called muscle activation techniques could get my body prepared, feeling ready. Because let's be honest, if you're if you feel like your body feels kind of crappy every day. Yeah, I get it. You don't want to exercise. But it is amazing that we see so many clients that don't even consider themselves as exercisers and they come in for other reasons like, you know, I want to be able to travel or be able to pick up my grandkids or be able to sit at my desk for more than an hour without my, you know, my back start or my back muscles start failing me and, you know, I'm feeling weird. If more people could know that, you know, (laughs) the reverse happens all the time where we get people in the MAT process and they start realizing like, dang, I could start exercising because I feel good enough to exercise. I feel good. No, it's so true. I mean, I've had a number of clients that have come in that went through the process exactly as you're describing, Julie. They come in for MAT and then after a handful of sessions, they're like, wow, yeah, my body feels good enough now where I can start exercising again. 
And they were psyched about that. And that wasn't necessarily their goal. They weren't coming in saying, like you, like you said, hey, I need to start, or I'm here because I need to start exercising. I'm here because I want to start exercising. They're saying, hey, I'm here because of you know whatever reason, whatever else they're experiencing. But then through the MAT process, they realize, oh yeah, the things that were holding them back from exercising before, those things no longer are. Hey, I can really actually start exercising now. Because I I also think that MAT is like the ultimate debunker of the quote, I'm just getting old, you know. And so (laughs) we we allow our clients to tell us they're they're, they're just getting old until, you know, they prove it to themselves that, oh, Mm -hmm. it's actually my muscle system just needed some servicing. I think one thing that is really missing from the health conversation in our society is that is the care of our muscle system I think right now all we think about in the care of our muscle system is rest and relaxation in forms of things like a massage or really literally just resting you know getting in a hot tub things like that but rarely are we ever presented with this idea that hey you know maybe our muscles need to be serviced we kind of all wake up with the assumption that you know our muscles should just work all the time. You know, I don't need to do anything to them and they should feel good. They should feel ready to go. They should feel supportive. They should feel like, you know, they're allowing me to do all the stuff I want to do. And then when that starts failing, we blame it on age or we blame it on our brains that just tell us, I just don't like exercising or whatever. So what we want to talk to you about today is a lot of the benefits and the changes that we see all the time with muscle activation techniques that can really prepare your body for movement, for exercise, so that you can be getting those potent and irreplaceable benefits from exercise. I mean, to get the benefits of exercise, and everyone knows they there are huge benefits of exercise, you actually have to exercise. Like you can't just think like, oh, I'll get some of them without doing it or, you know, maybe they aren't that good or no, they're amazing. You need to be exercising and MAT is a process that will help you exercise because again, we want you feeling good when you exercise. It shouldn't feel like it's it's damaging your body or making your body worse. So by listening to this podcast today, you're going to walk away with a better understanding of not only how MAT can help you exercise, but why it would be important to make sure that your muscles are functioning well before you go start exercising. Because one of the things that we see is people get really motivated and really excited about working out for a short period of time. And one of the biggest determinants for how long that period of time is, is how long they're able to actually tolerate their version of exercise. If we can keep your muscles working well or get them working well at the start and keep them working well, it's a greater likelihood that you're going to be able to tolerate your version of exercise for a longer period of time, which means you get to exercise for longer, which leading to Julie's last point means you get the health benefits of exercise for longer. So let's start though by kind of defining what muscle activation techniques is and discussing, well, what's the goal of it? and why is it important in the first place, okay? So what muscle activation techniques is, is an assessment process to determine where in your body you have muscles that aren't contracting well. So to Julie's earlier point, where she said, hey, you know what, everybody feels like, oh yeah, you know, your muscles should just work, like they should just work, like you wake up in the morning and you know, they should just go about doing their thing. And for a lot of us, That is the case for a lot of our muscles, but it's not the case for all of our muscles and it's not the case for all of us, okay? For most of us, we have muscles that aren't working as well as they could be working. Some of us have a lot of muscles that aren't working as well as they could be working and it's really noticeable to us. For others, we don't have as many muscles that aren't working as well. Most of our muscles are working really uh, are, are working well enough that we're relatively asymptomatic. So wherever we fall in the continuum, across the board, you have muscles that are working better than others. And it's the muscles that aren't working well enough that can be an issue over time. Whether they're an issue right now is determined by a lot of different things, but One thing is, is that if they stay not working well, then it can lead to bigger issues down the road. So MAT assesses your body to figure out where these muscles are in your body 
that aren't working well. And then it goes about addressing those muscles to kind of get them up to speed with everything else. Now, Charlie, you've brought up some really good points, especially with MAT looks at what muscles are not are not working well. Like where where in your muscle system are we kind of lagging behind? And if this is your first podcast listening to Charlie and I, you're going to find out really quick that we spend a lot of time think, thinking about muscles, which we understand that normal people don't do that. So we're trying to give you a little bit of an insight of, of where we're thinking about with muscles. Because when you think about muscles, I am not sure what comes to your mind, but for most people, they might kind of think, um, you know, my glutes or my abs. You kind of think like, What do they look like or where are they located on my body? But what we're talking about here is the function of muscles. And the one function that muscles do is they contract. And as we brought up before, the thing that we do to work on our muscles or allow our muscles to recover is a lot of relaxation stuff. Now, what MAT does is it's like a check to see what muscles are contracting, i.e. what muscles are doing their job, and what muscles need a little bit more help contracting, meaning which muscles need help doing a good job at their job. And so if you're listening to this, you're probably realizing, well, that's pretty unique because again, the way we know how to treat our muscles is again to do relaxation things, which there is great value to doing those things. But there is also a huge void in, uh, in our ability to you know, find a, a, a specialist or a practitioner that is saying, hey, let's just do a quick check. Let's see what muscles are working and which ones are not working. And let's start working on the ones that aren't working so that they can rejoin the party and rejoin when you go exercise. Because remember, the whole goal of doing muscle activation techniques, at least in this context, is to make your body feel prepared for exercise or prepared for movement or prepared for activity. And a lot of us walk around, again, not feeling this preparedness. And that's why we don't want to exercise or we we decide to do Netflix and chill rather than go for a walk after dinner or, you know, things of that nature. So we're going to also jump into some of these benefits of, okay, well, what happens when we start getting muscles working better and when we get MAT? Because Ideal, I mean, in our brains, that sounds great. Like, let's all go get MAT. But we want to know, well, what is that going to make my body do? Or what is that going to do for me? What, how is that going to serve me in this like life journey of, of hopefully you're in this life journey of, hey, I want to keep my body as, you know, prepared and conditioned for life as possible. And ideally, we want your body prepared to do stuff you enjoy too. I mean, not just doing the bare minimum, but so that you can go on that random ski trip that you got invited on uh, once coronavirus is over and we can travel <laughs> freely again. Or, you know, if some if you want to, you know, climb on the floor and look for something that's under your couch, you're not hesitating to do that. So we also want you doing things that you can, you want to enjoy. So let's jump into when, when you get MAT, and we get muscles working better, functioning better, contracting better, all meaning the same thing, what does that mean for your body? So I think one of the first noticeable improvements that a lot of clients mention is an improvement in strength. And this is something that's seen like in the moment with MAT. Hey, we had some muscles that couldn't contract well, so their output was lower. We get the muscles contracting better. Their output is higher. Oh, wow, that feels stronger. I can feel that my strength has improved. And this can look like a lot of different things. Okay, yes, this looks like within the MAT process, like you're able to hold positions better. Okay, you are testing better in the process. But this can also be like you stand up off the table and you're like, wow, I feel taller because your muscles are able to kind of hold your bones in a, you know, you hold your skeleton in a more upright position. They have the strength to do that. It can be, you, you walk around, you're like, I feel lighter because now all of a sudden, you know, your 200 pound frame is being held up by more muscles. So the relative workload of each of those muscles is less. So it feels like you're lighter. You can actually see an improvement in your workouts where, okay, you know, before I was able to do a leg press with 150 pounds. Now I can do a leg press with, you know, 170 pounds or more. I mean, I I had a client who after one session of MAT 
added 60 pounds to her squat. And it wasn't like a one rep max squat. It was a squat that she was doing for multiple reps, like like 10 reps or something. She was able to go up 60 pounds in that. And so it was a drastic increase in her strength output by getting her muscles working better. So that that's one of the first things that clients notice is this improvement in strength. I mean, Charlie, we just, in the last couple weeks, backstory quick, Charlie and I work on each other with MAT every week. In the last couple weeks, we've been working on one of the motions that is called trunk rotation or trunk twisting, and we actually have a trunk twisting machine. So some people don't care about like the data, like, oh, cool, you went up and wait, but it is cool like to see. And I remember we started, and I've always done 50 pounds on the trunk rotation, like probably for the last three years. And now I do 70 pounds. That's a, it's a big difference. And so what this 70, this 50 to 70 pounds, I don't know what percentage increase that is, but that's a lot. That's a, at least a, 40%. almost a third. Oh yeah. A full, okay. 40% increase. That's huge. And so when you're listening to this, don't interpret it like, okay, well, I'm not like a muscle head. I don't need to be lifting heavy weights. I don't care if I can lift heavy weights, but this is what it means. Is it, is it's showing firsthand how, it wasn't about me like building muscles. It was about me having more muscles available. When more muscles are available, your body can do more with less effort, okay? And so, because for someone to realistically go from 50 pounds on an, ex- to increase 40% on an exercise or even more, whatever we have in the gym, that takes a lot of time. That takes a lot of conditioning, strengthening, doing that exercise a whole bunch of times. But what we find with MAT is that it's not that that person like hypertrophied or grew their muscles. That's what that word means. Uh, Or they actually physically like their muscles could built strength. But what it is, is, is just more muscles available. And I think oftentimes we don't realize that not all my muscles are available. Like it's never talked about like in the health field, like, hey, you know, you might be operating at 50% of your muscle capacity. If you got MAT, you'd be operating, you know, with an increase of that, you know, one day it'll be 60 and then we can build to 70 and we can build. And what this means is that you can do more work with less effort. And I don't know about you, but if I do a workout and it feels terrible or I'm trying to go for a jog and I just feel like, every step is like the heaviest leg I've ever lifted. It is not enjoyable. I do not want to do that. So this really helps new exercisers feel like, wow, this is attainable. I can do this. This is not breaking down my body. So yeah, building strength is the number one goal of MAT. And it is very apparent when people when people experience MAT that they feel strong, they, they feel stronger. And we actually prove it all the time. And I know, Charlie, I, maybe a couple years ago, you got in a, in a fun phase where you actually had like a force dynamometer, a force dynamometer, and you would actually press on people's legs. And, and because we like to see, you know, is what we think we're doing? Is it really happening? Because these people are feeling changes in strength. <laughs> Can we track it? And you know, We do. It's really cool. Yeah, it is really cool. Not only that, do they see increases in strength? The second thing that I think is really noticeable to people is improvements in their joint motion. Mm -hmm. And this is without stretching. This is without massage. This is without doing the foam rolling or the traditional things are thought of that need to be done in order to improve the joint motion. And the way we try to discuss this with people is like, okay, well, think about what is supposed to be moving your bones. What is supposed to be moving your joints? And that's your muscles. Well, if your muscles are able to work better, then that would mean that your joints are able to move better. And we see that objectively, and people experience it subjectively, but we see these changes in joint motion from before to after MAT. And sometimes it is dramatic. You know, we've done videos. You can check them out on our Instagram pages and on our our Facebook pages of kind of before and afters. And sometimes it's just a little subtle shift, but they feel it because the, the joint itself doesn't have much motion, but they feel it translate throughout the rest of their body is like, wow, my body's moving so much more freely. And that's a really cool thing. Why this is important if you are just starting to exercise is your exercise should match kind of what your body is physically able to do. But a lot of times we try to match our bodies 
to what we think the exercise should be, all right? So if you have a really solid exercise professional, they'll be able to match the exercise that you're doing to your body. But a lot of times, we don't have access to that, and so we're thinking, okay, well, this is what a squat should look like. This is what a lunge should look like, and we are matching our body to the exercise itself. Well, one thing that increased joint motion will help you do is it will give you a little bit more margin to, to perform with in order to be able to do an exercise that maybe looks the way you think it should look, okay? Now, here's the caveat to that. Joint motion for the sake of joint motion is not a good thing, all right? Joint motion, to increase joint motion it, just for the sake of increasing joint motion, that's not what we're after here. But because it's coupled with that first point of increased strength and increased stability of the joint, now when you are able to move your joints further, they're also able to contract better, which means your joints are able to stay better protected. And so there's less risk for injury. So that's a really, really big kind of caveat and, and disclaimer for this thing. Getting your joints to move more just to try to get them to move more is not what we're after here. But because it's coupled with the first point of improvements in strength, this is really beneficial for new exercisers because they're able to feel their body move better. Now, just like when we brought up the strength, you know, I wanted to bring it into perspective because I know not everyone's interested in being a strong bodybuilder, but I hope that the, the way that I changed the explanation could make it apply to every individual. So let's do it again with joint motion. Now, joint motion is kind of like a, I, I think it's more of like an industry specific term, but let me say some other terms that you're going to be a little bit more familiar with that we hear all the time. So joint motion would be the same thing as like range of motion or flexibility. People love that one. The ability or the like being limber, like they want to feel limber, able to move easily. And then loose, I feel loose, meaning I can move freely, it feels easy. Now we see this a ton with, I think people that experience chronic tightness, they want to always talk about this, but also people that are the age of 40 and over. Because here's the thing, uh, when you're 40 and over, you're, yes, you're young, your body can still adapt, but you are aging, which means that your body, your muscles need a little bit of attention. And so if you haven't given them attention in the form of something like MAT, where you're saying, hey, let's do a routine check, make sure muscles are working the way they should be working. Well, then you have muscles and probably more than you ever did not working well. And so when you have enough that aren't working well, you start feeling that in ways of losing range of motion or what Charlie said, joint motion, or you could say losing flexibility, losing limberness, losing a looseness. So as Charlie said, muscles are the one thing that move our bones. And so when our bones aren't moving well, meaning you're losing range of motion, you're losing flexibility, you're losing your limberness, you're losing your ability to move freely, that loose feeling, that means that's a great sign, especially if you used to you used to be able to do something. That's a great sign that your muscles are starting to lose their ability to contract. And so when you restore that ability to contract, a lot of that limberness, that flexibility, that looseness will re that will come back. I was just thinking of a funny story because, you know, you guys, I try to make you chuckle sometimes. <laughs> Anyways, Wednesdays are the days that Charlie and I swap. We're recording this on a Thursday. So yesterday, Charlie and I worked on each other. I worked on Charlie's shoulders because that's where his body was showing some limitations. And uh, he was like, man, I feel good. And he's like, remember when my client walked around after his session? He goes, my shoulders feel stupid loose. And I was <laughs> like, that is so funny. I love that. But it's just amazing that when you get muscles working better, not only, as we can go back to point number one, not only are you restoring strength and you're, you're stronger, but you're also restoring range of motion and flexibility, which the, the two of those together are so powerful. And it should be the two, I think those are like the two biggest things that people should always aim for with their body because we don't want our bodies to be like restricted and stuff. But it does matter how we approach this flexibility because as charlie said if we if we try to aim to get more range of motion or more flexibility just to be more flexible that opens up our bodies to vulnerability to injury and so things that relax your body that's exactly what they're doing they're relaxing muscles so the muscles are less prepared to tolerate 
stuff. And so it actually makes your body more vulnerable to injury. Whereas MAT directly impacts the strength and ability for muscles to operate. And so you kind of get this one, two punch with the strength, the strength restoration and this flexibility mobility piece. Yeah, that one, two punch is huge. I love that. Now, the next thing that we want to talk to you about is an increase in your ability to tolerate your workouts. And this is huge for new exercisers because I I would say one of the predominant reasons why we hear that people don't want to start exercising or don't exercise consistently is they really don't like the way their body feels after they finish working out. Mm -hmm. Whether they're feeling achy, beat up, sore. Like they're like, yeah, you know what? I would work out, but I don't want to feel all stiff and achy for, you know, three days after. Well, that's an indication that at some level your body was not able to tolerate your working out whatever you did for exercise, but muscle activation techniques by getting your muscles contracting better, that will allow your body to tolerate your workout better, which, and on the one hand is like, okay, yeah, now you might be able to exercise harder with fewer negative repercussions. On the other hand, it's like, well, now maybe you can just exercise in the first place without any negative repercussions. So you can you can lo- look at it like, okay, yeah, now you can get started working out. And then as you start working out more, now you're like, okay, guess what? Now if you want to, you can actually push it harder with less likelihood of negative repercussions because your body's able to tolerate it better. Yeah, I think this is a huge one because so many people, again, disqualify themselves from being quote unquote exercisers because they're like, well, I'm not one of those people that like, like to feel sore the next day i was just thinking about this and charlie you can edit it out later because i'm not sure if it's appropriate i love how you always give a disclaimer before you're about to you know go off on your own tangent i know well i was just thinking about this so (laughs) (laughs) you guys probably won't be surprised to hear this but charlie and i we're not really big into drinking and um earlier this summer we thought you know, it'll be so fun. Like I redid our, we redid our deck this spring and I was like, we were like, you know, it'd be so fun. Like if we could become like social drinkers, you know, we could like try different beverages. I mean, not like to get drunk, but you know, we're like, let's try this kind of wine and let's try this kind of mixed drink. And so, so we were like, okay, yeah, Saturday nights, we're going to like try something new. I mean, you know, and so we were like trying all this new alcoholic beverages. And I think we only made it like, four weeks I, yeah it was about f- four weeks five weeks and we're like oh yeah this is dumb okay. and <laughs> why did we stop we really enjoyed sitting out on our deck yeah. relaxing having a new beverage that we were like do we like it do we not like it let's mm. try it out but what we hated was that we slept like crap that night and it was like we have a one-year-old so it's like any night that you like don't have to wake up early the next day or like any sleep just dist- you know so we would sleep like crap that night and then the next morning we would just eat like crap and it wasn't it wasn't like we were like drunk or anything but it was like you know you just feel different and so it was the side effect it was like our lack of tolerance of having one or two drinks that would like that negative after effect i guess we could say made us stop and we're like okay we'll just uh, have a bubbly water you know (laughs) i'll have a seltzer with lime thanks so anyways i get it if you exercise right now and you're like it is just not worth it to me to have a day or two after every exercise bout for me to feel pretty crummy because i didn't want to have you know one or two drinks on a saturday night because i didn't want to feel crummy The next day, it just wasn't worth it to me. So I understand that feeling. But the difference is that there are huge health benefits to exercising and there are not huge health benefits to drinking alcohol. So, I mean, maybe there are, but I am not the professional to ask about that. (laughs) (laughs) So anyways, what muscle activation techniques can do is it can help your body tolerate exercise. Now, you do have to keep in mind that if you've never exercised and you go to the gym and you think you're going to do this crazy intense workout, yes, you are going to feel it the next day because your body is not used to that. Like you're not conditioned to do that. But also one thing you can help do to help your conditioning is not only create, you know, a strategic progressive plan, you know, start and build into it, 
but is to also get, get MAT, which will help you tolerate more with your exercise and have less of those crappy days. I mean, my clients, my goal is for them to never have the cruddy day afterwards. And if they do, then that's a huge indicator to me as a trainer that I completely misread the workout and their body's preparedness to do the workout. So your workouts should never make you feel bad. In fact, they should make you feel more energized. They should help you sleep better. They should make you feel better the next day. And we are actually very anti, like you should feel sore and achy the following day. I know that's like what a lot of people aim for, but that is not what our mindset of clients are looking for. And it is actually not necessary to get any of the health benefits of exercise. So don't feel like because I don't feel it the next day, it means I didn't do anything. It's actually a really good sign that you did a really appropriate workout for your body. So if you don't like the negative after effects of exercise, there are things you can do to uh, navigate that. Um, and one of those things is muscle activation techniques. And that's perfect because it leads right to the next point of why MAT is such a great starting place when you are going to start exercising. And that is it will help improve your recovery from your workouts. Okay. Yes. You're not wanting to feel beat up, achy and sore after your workouts for sure. But there are some processes that happen within your body before you even start to experience that, that MAT can help with. And one of them it has to deal with a, an aspect of your nervous system called your autonomic nervous system. And when you aren't recovering well from your workouts, your body tends to stay in what's called a sympathetic state more, which is like your fight or flight response. So your heart rate will be a little bit more elevated. Your blood pressure might be a little bit higher. And so that's a sign that your body is more stressed from whatever you've been doing. It doesn't have to be your workouts. It could just be from life, from how you ate, from what's going on at work, from how you're sleeping or not sleeping. But that being said, when you do work out, there is a chance that your body goes into more of this sympathetic state. Well, one way to combat that is is by going into the opposite, which is called a parasympathetic state, which is more your rest or digest. And this is where we see people's uh, resting heart rate starts to lower, their blood pressure starts to lower, and you're able to get these really nice kind of endocrine or hormonal responses to the different stimuluses that you're doing with your, your exercise. And so, you know, increases in testosterone, increases in growth hormone, all things like that can accompany this parasympathetic state. So when you're exercising, you're stressing your body, you're going to be in more of this sympathetic state. Well, one of the things that you can do to boost your recovery is try to get into a parasympathetic state, you know, as quickly as possible after you finish your workouts and that will help kickstart this recovery process. Well, one thing that we see with muscle activation techniques is it helps people's nervous system shift from a sympathetic state to a parasympathetic state. And we're able to measure this through changes in what's called heart rate variability, which we've talked about before, but essentially it's a measure of how much time time elapses between the heartbeats. And so the, the, then the variance or the variability of, of your heart beating, that can be an indication of whether your body is more stressed or whether it is in more of this rest and digest state. Okay. This parasympathetic state. And what we see time and again is that when muscle activation techniques is included in somebody's exercise plan, their body will have a greater activation of the parasympathetic aspect of their autonomic nervous system, which means it's kickstarting this recovery process. It's helping their body recover better. And from an exercise perspective, the, the better you're able to recover after your workouts, the faster you're able to recover from your workouts, the lower the likelihood is that you will feel achy, beat up and sore. And the sooner you can get back to exercising the next time. Now, one thing we never consider with exercise, because when we think about exercise, we think about exercising, but one of the biggest things with exercise is the amazing health benefits that we get. And actually all the health benefits that we get, well, not all of them, but many of them happen when we recover from the stress or from the bout of exercise that we've done. So recovering from your exercise is so incredibly important. And MAT really, really assists with that um, because exercise is a stressor and the, a lot of health benefits come from when we recover and adapt from that stressor. 
Another thing that we want to talk with you about is a decrease in risk for injury. And I would say that uh, that one of the things that also stops people from exercising, aside from not f- wanting to feel beat up, achy, and sore, is they're scared of getting hurt. Well, having MAT done by getting your muscles contracting better, having you know your muscle strength improve, having your joint motion improve, and having the joint motion be accompanied by that increase in stability that overall can help to decrease your risk for injury because your muscles will be supporting your joints better. You will have more muscles working, which means individual muscles won't be having to take on as much stress. Your passive tissues, your ligaments, your discs, your cartilage, your fascia will be better supported by your muscles, so that will take on less stress. So overall, a risk for injury will decrease with your exercise by getting muscle activation techniques done. Not only that, your risk of injury, not when you're exercising or when you're not exercising also decreases. Like I have so many clients that used to be like routine back thrower outers Mm -hmm. and now they just don't do it. It's like, well, okay, well, because your body is, is able to exercise and become stronger. And a lot of injuries that we get are very tightly related to the muscle system and just a lack of preparedness of the muscle system. So if we can get the muscles prepared, contracting well, doing their job, you're going to become uh, less vulnerable to injury in and outside of your workouts. And then the final bit that we want to bring up with you is this improvement in what we're going to call like conscious connection to your muscles or like this mind muscle connection. And essentially what this translates to into your workouts is you'll have a better ability to kind of feel your muscles squeezing while you're doing your workouts. I remember for the longest time, every time I do some kind of chest press, I'd always get this kind of sharp stabbing pain in the very front of my shoulder. And this is pretty common for people. It's something that I definitely hear about a lot is, oh, you know, okay, you do a, a push up or you do a bench press or whatever, and you just feel it in the front of your shoulders. Well, I distinctly remember one of the first times Julie worked on my pec muscles. All of a sudden, the next time I went to do a chest press, I didn't feel the front of my shoulder at all. I felt it all kind of in the belly of my pec muscles. And it's like, wow, okay, this is what this exercise is supposed to feel like. And because I was able to contract those muscles better and we were able to kind of practice the contraction aspect during the MAT session, I was able to consciously get a better connection to those muscles. Now when I went to use them for my workouts, I wasn't getting those those weird pains that I may have been getting before. All of a sudden I was feeling the exercise the way it was intended to be felt and the way I was wanting it to be felt, which totally changes the exercise experience. Yeah, this is something I don't think a lot of people think about. <laughs> Again, as I told you, a lot of people don't think about muscles, which I get it. But Charlie and I think a lot about them. <laughs> and being able to be connected to your body is a huge aspect of not only exercising for life, like long term, because you're able to like sense stuff, you know, like, dang, we did chest press and I'm not feeling my chest. I'm feeling my joint hurting. That's a good sign that okay, muscles aren't functioning properly. And that leads into a lot of these other points that we brought up. Things like injury, right? It's like we get a a really good insight into what might be vulnerable to injury because things aren't operating well. I think too, for example, this this past week, I did a whole bunch of gardening, which meant I was a whole bunch of bent over. And that night, I remember my back really hurting. And the following day, my hamstrings were sore. And then the following day, I was I was ready to work out. I felt fine. I felt good. And I got on the abdominal machine. And I did some crunches and immediately started cramping. And it was just my warm up weight too. It was very light. It was just that motion. And I, and I told Charlie, I'm like, up, oh, we're gonna have to work on my abs this week, because I couldn't I, um, I couldn't connect. I couldn't contract my abdominals because I was so overusing them while doing my gardening this past week. And sure enough, yesterday, I actually forgot about that. And sure enough, he's working on my abs. And I thought, oh, yeah, remember I told you we had to work on this? So the brain-body connection is is really, really cool. It is one that I think a lot of people don't experience unless they try to. And But it is one that is like a great one to connect with your body and to gain information on your body. So... If you are about to start exercising or if you are currently exercising, adding in muscle activation techniques can be massively beneficial. In fact, when people call in to us to start exercising, you know, we talk with them about MAT as the place to start for their whole exercise process because 
of the improvements in strength, because of the improvements in joint motion, because of their increased ability to then tolerate exercise, because of their improved ability to recover from their workouts, because of the decreased risk of injury that can come from doing MAT, and because of that increased kind of mind, muscle, brain, body, increased conscious connection for your, for your muscles after getting muscle activation techniques. Those aspects are huge because when those aspects aren't in place, usually they tend to lead to reasons as to why people stop exercising. And that's one thing that we want to avoid at all costs. Look, you can only get the health benefits from exercising if you're able to exercise in the first place and if you're able to continue to exercise. So when we talk about this idea of exercising for life, exercising for what you want to do in life right now, as well as exercising for the entirety of your life, when it comes to that ladder, you're going to have to find ways to exercise for the entirety of your life. And one way to help you do that is by making sure your muscles continue to work well. And our place to go for that is muscle activation techniques. So who do you know that needs to hear this episode? Who do you know that is wanting to start exercising, but they're concerned about their body not feeling well, or they are currently exercising, but they feel like maybe they're not recovering as well from their workouts as they should be? Share this episode with them so they can learn about why adding in muscle activation techniques is such an awesome place to start, an awesome thing to do when they are exercising. And while you're online, if you wouldn't mind, head on over to iTunes and leave us a rating and review. It helps people find this podcast when they're looking for information on exercise and when they're looking for information on health. So if you found value in this podcast today, let us know by leaving us that five-star rating and review. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Have a fantastic week, and we'll talk with you all next week.